Thank you. Wow, a lot of energy in here tonight. I love it. <clears throat> now I'm going to get my energy out because I got 15 minutes to get the energy out. No rush, right? Uh, I am excited to be here tonight. And, and I like to start my presentations off the same way I start my sessions off with clients. And I ask a very, very simple question. Can your business be greater? How many feel that their businesses can be greater? Yep. Oh, wow, I'm in the right room. And, and so that level of greatness that we have is supported by three distinct pillars. Leading, planning, and selling. Our ability to lead people, our ability to plan for the future, and our ability to sell at dynamic levels. And, and, a, and a structural break in any pillar could be dangerous because some of us, how many are thinking big for 2020? How many are going to take it? Oh, I didn't even get the finish yet. How many are going to have the best year ever? All right, so we've got a level of greatness. Now, based on time tonight, I only have time to talk about leadership, but I do want to ask you another question. What industries are represented here tonight? Who, what, what kind of industry do you have in the audience? Coaching. Coaching. Real estate. Real estate. Trade show. Trade show. Financial IT. advice. Financial advice. IT. 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 Healthcare. Wow, a lot of different industries. And so since we're just talking about pillar one, leading, let me ask you this. As leaders, here's something we all have in common, regardless of what industry we're in, what business are we truly in as leaders? The what business? People. The people business. That's it. We are all in the people business. And let me ask you a question. In your organization, if I were to ask you, what is the greatest asset in your company, what would you say? People. People. Yep. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being best, how would you rank the importance of your people? And then I ask my clients this, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being best, how would you rank your leadership development programs? All right, don't answer that question. <laughs> right? So we give, we, what I found in the, in the business sector is that there might be, not here, but there might be out there, a lot of lip service on the people business, and we switch that around. And we teach business leaders how to get back into the people business. So my background, and it was alluded to a little bit earlier, is I actually know the date that my leadership journey began. It was August 24th, 1987. I stepped off of the bus at the recruiting depot. Yes, that is me. I stepped off of the bus at the recruiting, thank you, thank you. At the recruiting depot in San Diego, California, and I began the onboarding program for the Marine Corps. Does anybody know what their onboarding program is called? Hard. <laughs> hard. That's awesome. It was hard, but they actually have an official name for it. Anybody know the name? Boot camp. Yeah, it was, it was as fun as that sounds. It was boot camp. And in fact, I, I, I saw a movie in the theater three weeks before I went in. Anybody see the movie Full Metal Jacket? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't smile when I came out of there, though. And, and th that was their onboarding program. And let me ask you, how many of you have an onboarding program? Okay, so we're in the people business, right? We don't onboard our people. All right, so that's the first takeaway for tonight. We gotta onboard them, right? We gotta onboard them, teach them how to commit. Okay, but let me ask you, if I'm a new person in your company and today's my first day, what's it like in your onboarding program? What do you do on my first day? You just give me the silent treatment. All right, so we are already finding areas for improvement here. Uh, okay, an orientation, paperwork. Okay, let me make it really simple. Is it friendly and welcoming? Yes. Okay. That's not how it was here. It was not friendly and welcoming. And these were my onboarders. And just get a close look at that. Those were my actual drill instructors. Those were my onboarders. They didn't look that nice and happy when we were with them. In fact, that was the picture they posed that we sent home to our moms. But I didn't learn a lot about leading and, and managing in there. And quick question for you. Is there a difference between leading and managing? Isn't it funny? We know it, but what's the answer? What is that difference? How do we really explain this to business leaders and say there is a difference, we can feel it, but how do we explain it? And I'll tell you what I've written about. I have a book on leadership, and in the very beginning I say, we need to manage the work and lead the people. We need to manage budgets and shift schedules, and we need to manage inventory, and we need to manage projects, but we need to lead people. We need to encourage them and inspire them and motivate them. We need to delegate to them where we have purpose-driven delegation that empowers them in the process. We need to increase accountability, which forms a partnership between two people. It's course correction, not micromanagement. There's so much more to leadership than, than most people know. Now, I didn't even know what my job was going to be when I started there. In fact, I went in what's called open contract. Any other veterans out there? Okay, so most of you might have known your job, your MOS, your military occupational specialty. I didn't know. When my drill instructor said, what do you want to do in the Marine Corps? I thought I had a good answer. And I said, I want to be a Marine. <laughs> and he said, all right, that's fine. The Corps will pick your job out for you, son. I said, dang, I should have had a better answer. At the very end of boot camp, about two days left. They went around and they called off our jobs, our MOSs, our military occupational specialties, and they got to me. 
And since my last name starts with a T, I was at the very end. And everything is very loud in boot camp. And so they called my name. They said, Thurwanger. I said, sir, here, sir. And he said, 7311. I didn't know what that was. And I thought, I, I should probably know. And so instead of asking the guy on the right, I asked my buddy Robert, I said, hey, what's a 7311? He says, I don't know, man. You got to ask him. And, and the big guy on the right, Sergeant Hughes, he had this huge hand. And it could fit all the way around there. Do, do you know how I know that? Yeah, because I scratched an itch on my chest one night during an inspection. You guys don't do that to your new people? All right. Yeah, some of you are writing it down. Do not write that down. You'll get arrested. Um, but it worked there. And so I had to ask permission to speak to him. I couldn't just go up and say, hey, buddy, what, what, what's a 7311? So I said, sir, recruit Thurwanger, request permission to speak to drill instructor Sergeant Hughes, sir. And he said, what do you want, dirt bag? But he didn't, he didn't say dirt bag. But I told Travis I'd keep it clean here. And, and I'll let you think about what he might have called me. And this is what he said. He said, you're going to talk to airplanes. And I said, what? I, I said, sir, the recruit does not know what a 7311 is. He said, you're going to talk to airplanes. He said, now get out of my face. So I did. Went back over to Robert. He said, well, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to talk to airplanes. <laughs> and he said, what does that mean? And I said, I, I don't know, but I don't want to ask him again. And, and so that I went home and my recruiter told me at 7311, he told me what my first full-time job would be. And it was an air traffic controller. And so I went to four months of air traffic control school. I reported in for duty at the Marine Corps Air Station in Yuma, Arizona, and I worked in that tower, the busiest military airport in the world. Every branch, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, they all flew out of there, and we controlled civilian traffic. Um, how many of you are flying anywhere recently or have flown? How do you feel knowing 18-year-olds are in the control tower? Yeah. <laughs> Their brains are good. That's right. And, and, and how are they doing it? With a generation we're afraid to issue authority to. How are they doing it? And it happens in every branch, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. They've got 18-year-olds in the control tower. And it's because I want to share a little concept with you. How many of you are familiar with the uh, idea of yin and yang, that concept? So we've seen that, that, that symbol before. And it's a Chinese philosophy that means what? Balance. Well, it means balance. But what they're saying is that opposites are required for balance. And, and so what I've done is I've taken this. And I want to ask you a quick question. How important is engagement in your organization for people to be engaged? All in, buy in. I'm here. I'm ready to get going. Is it important? Yeah. How would you like to see engagement rise? And so what I've done is I've created the engagement ring because it is a full circle. And, I, and I've added this. I've modified it a little bit so that opposites are required for balance. So most of us train. How many have training programs and train your people? But there's a difference between training and development. They're complete opposites. I was trained as an air traffic controller, but I was taught to think and act like a leader. And it was my development as a leader that allowed me to do more with the training I received. How many of you have ever experienced somebody who's been trained, but they still don't do what needs to be done? Anybody experience that? How many have ever said this? Can you just train on common sense? <laughs> and the answer is no, you cannot train on common sense. But you can develop people to think and act, behave like leaders. Think about this. All the people in your organization, how would it feel if every day they showed up and did what a leader would do? They thought and acted like a leader. What could you accomplish? Very powerful. So again, trained as an air traffic controller, developed to think and act like a leader, even though nobody was following me. Nobody reported into me yet. I was 18 years old. I was a private in the Marine Corps. I had no direct reports, but I had development as a leader, which magnified my training. And there's all kinds of stats on disengagement. Um, how many have seen stats on disengagement these days? And it's pretty low. In fact, this one here, I think this one's from Gallup. Gallup actually said that 72% of the people are not engaged in the workplace. And they actually called it sleepwalking. Have you ever worked with a sleepwalker? <laughs> have you ever worked with somebody that's just an eight and skate mindset? You ever worked with somebody who's just there for the paycheck, not the passion? And they're just not engaged. And then they get, the, the, the survey gets even worse. The survey says 18% actively undermine their coworkers. So think about this for a sec second. They hand out a survey that they want you to take. One of the questions is, do you actively undermine your coworkers? And 18% said, yes, that they were engaged about. It's got to be higher, right? Because if I actively undermine you, I'm probably going to lie about it too. And then here's the worst part. One out of four of your people are looking for a new job. And, and in this country, what I found as a coach is that people are promoted to a position of leadership but never taught the purpose of leadership. In other words, we've promoted, what is your name? 
Alex. Alex. We've promoted Alex based on availability, not capability as a leader. He may be the best at doing such and such, but now he has the responsibility of his team. But here's some great news. The leadership potential, when surveyed, 95% of people want to be part of something special and something great. Now that same survey also said, in fact, some surveys say that disengagement or non-engagement may be as high as 90%. How would you feel if I told you only 10% of the military, all the men and women serving our great nation, were not engaged, or only 10% were engaged? Would that, would that send some red flags up? Yeah. Yeah. It should in the business sector too, right? So 95% of people want to be part of something special and something great, but in the workplace, maybe only 10% are feeling it. That's a leadership gap that we can fill. Now, engaged team members. Here's what's interesting. Engaged team members, as soon as we help them to think and act like a leader, um, their performance can go up by 20%. How would you like to see the performance of your people go up by 20%? Now, leaders, here's the better news. If you can get the team engaged consistently, you can have 31% higher productivity, 37% higher sales, and 300% greater creativity. If you can sustain team engagement, your organization can achieve up to 202% greater results. How many of you are be okay with 202% greater results? I know that seems like pie in the sky, but I ran a media company in Southern California. I started off entry level, started to build every person up as a leader. With 18 months, I was the VP. We worked with companies like MTV, HBO, South Park. We grew 303%. Anybody ever eaten at Red Cow Restaurant? As their leadership coach, I didn't tell them how to make a better burger. I helped them develop their people and they grew 323%. But, but you can settle for 202 if you'd like. <laughs> but here's the issue. In the workplace, about 1% of the training time is dedicated to leadership development. And, and that 1% is usually policies and procedures and how to hire and fire. More of an HR role. I love HR, so if you're in HR, I love you, however, they don't get into the essence of leadership, our true purposes. So here's all I want to do today. I just want to encourage you, make the decision to lead. It's a choice that we all have to make. There's too many people in the workplace that have positions of leadership, but don't understand that they have elite purposes. They have the ability to enhance people's perceptions, to elevate priorities, to empower the people that they meet, and to exceed possibilities. Now, that's just one of the three pillars. If you have a level of greatness that you want to hit, I would encourage every single person in here to strengthen your leadership pillar, strengthen your planning pillar, and strengthen your sales pillar. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Thank you for believing in me and supporting us and helping us get this off the ground so we can make people think.